baby, I hope you survived all the hurricane jive and you're enduring all this political glibness because it's time for a respite from that type of jive and we're talking about Atari. Fun stuff, huh? Let's have some fun. Let's have a nice little respite from all the funky, weird crap. And let's have some funky good times. Counting down the top 100 Atari games of all time. We're going to start today with numbers. Today's list is 80 to 71. And we're going all the way down to number one over these series of videos. Who the hell am I to have the Bobalones count down this list? My name is Funkmaster V, Vinny Vineyard. I ran the Atari 7800 Forever website with content that's over 20 something years old, 22, 23 years. Man, I'm an old fart and I've got uh, world records to back it up and I'm partnered with John Stoll II from the Atari Network. What a cool little nerd he is. And together we beat the sh out of each other coming up with these 100 games for you people to look at because I know you like list shows, you lemmings. You're just like big old eyeballs to me. Big ol' eyeballs and clicks. I'm just kidding, I love you. I love you white people. Let's watch this badass intro and then we will count down the shears. Since the beginning of time, there's only been one website with the Bobalones to claim every game reviewed when it came to the pro system and that's Atari7800forever.com But now it's time to get on that YouTube trip, babies. And who am I? I'm Funkmaster V. Musician, ghost hunter, hat flipper, pro wrestler, comedian, actor, filmmaker, and I'm going to take you on a whirlwind tour of all things cool about Atari and the Atari 7800 with a podcast, news, even new crap. Baby, are you ready to get your groove on? Because it's about to get funky up in here. Hey, look, it's another Pong game. What do you know? Just like the previous entry on this list, Pong the Next Level brought the basic gameplay elements of Pong to a new generation of people with fancy graphics and a whole lot of extra gameplay jive. This is the only game so far on the list from the Hasbro incarnation of Atari, which was pretty short-lived, but they focused really on revamping and modernizing a lot of the old Atari classics from the 70s and the 80s. This game looks a lot like Boom Blocks, which was a Steven Spielberg game for the Wii, weirdly enough, and it plops players down in a universe centered around the game of Pong. You can see there's Pong in the snow, Pong in the ocean, Pong at an Aztec pyramid, Pong in the snow, Pong on the ice, Pong on the snow again. They, somebody was like from Canada that made this game, or they were an Inuit or whatever. There's lots of gameplay options and a lot of little side games and mini games, and it's just fun all the way around. For those of you keeping score at home, there are more Atari games for the PlayStation systems on this list than for the Atari Lynx. How does that make you feel, Lynx boy? Hey, and if you're interested in that period of time where Hasbro owned Atari, check out Jason Hill's interview with me and John Stoll on this channel. It's called the Atari Dark Ages, the Jason Hill interview. And that guy is so pimp, he spells his name Jason, J-A-Y-S-O-N. If you love polygons, man, you're going to love Stun Runner. And Stun Runner, the stun stands for super... Technical underdog n -n -n news runner. Something like that. I can't really remember. But this is fast. It's clean. It's funky. It's just like my taxi cab company that I own. It was fun to even like get on this machine. It kind of felt like you're in a futuristic motorcycle. Uh, all sorts of different types of things to accomplish and see and do and enemies and power ups and turbos. And it was just really cool. And the graphics, it's kind of like vector graphics for the uh, old Atari arcade games back in the early 80s and the late 70s. Uh, these polygonal graphics, when they worked, they were really cool. And this is a game where it really looked neato. Really cool sound effects and music, and the lady's voice was extra sexy. Press the dark button to fire shockwave. Well, I guess that depends on how long it's been since you had a date. The sense of speed was undeniable, and this really wasn't just like a normal race game. This was kind of like a game where you had to accomplish certain goals. And a lot of the fun was really trying to figure out how to beat each level within the time limit. 
a lot of fun, a great racer, definitely deserving of the top 100 score. Uh, uh, I mean, right. Here's another game by Activision where two boxers, that those are boxers, that's not just some sort of weird mini boss from an Atari 7800 shooter game or some sort of strange sex toy. That, that Those are two boxers looking from the bald spot down. Yes, you see it now? Anyway, this is a great game. It's fun. It's good for two people. It's pretty basic and there's not a lot to talk about it, but if you like your friends and you like having fun boxing by Activision for the 2600 is a hoot and uh, that's all I got to say about that so I got to fill up a couple of seconds here and I'm not sure what to do so here's a clip of Mike Tyson Mike Tyson a fellow for whom everybody predicts a great future uh, if they can find some Here's another game for the Jaguar, or as those Australian knuckleheads say on their videos. Jaguar game. What a good God. What are they doing down there? This is an easy to pick up and play shoot 'em up. It's based on an arcade game, which was pretty awesome, but the Jaguar version compared to the Genesis and the Super Nintendo versions is almost, uh, you know, it's pretty near arcade perfect. The great sound, great bass, you know, with the explosions and the thumping of the. Uh, uh, Japanese techno track really colorful and it's simple you know it reminds me of like Pluto's for the Atari 7800 or something like that it's a forced vertical scrolling game kind of like Xevious but you don't have to deviate between land targets and air targets uh, your lasers just kind of take care of everything at once your ship was created by the remains of the fuselage of alien warships which is kind of cool you can power up your ship in one of two ways you can have lasers or you can have spread shots come on man spread shots all the way in addition to that you also have a pretty awesome looking bomb that blows up a lot of the stuff on the screen and remains for a little while after you get done kicking butt on the planet that we're on you can go to outer space and take on all of the evil jive turkeys from mars or wherever these cats are from another great thing about this game is it's really cool if you have a friend which I've been looking for one of those longer than I have a Jaguar. And a second controller, you and a buddy can Rip Roar, Han Solo, Luke Skywalker, Thelma and Louise, Chewbacca and Chewbacca's Fleas, all the way into the end of time, blowing the hell out of these bad guys. Hey, you remember when I was telling you about that crazy dude that loves dragons a lot in one of the earlier videos? Well, he's back on this list with Harpy's Curse. Now, what's strange about this is we're not dealing with no damn dragons in this game, really. We are dealing with a harpy, and I'm a harpy is kind of like an uh, evil bird woman horror witch, which sounds pretty cool to me. But this game is a Metroidvania in the sense that uh, there's some backtracking, there's some exploration, it's like a one giant maze. Uh, I believe your harpy, maybe she's a good guy, right? Maybe she's like a libertarian. She doesn't want to kill human beings anymore and eat babies. Maybe she's like, I, I just want to, you know, I just want to paint or something. And they said, no, you're a harpy, you got to be evil. So they banished her to this land, and you've basically got to find numerous bosses to fight to get out of this dungeon that you're trapped in. This is a pretty big maze to explore, and it can be overwhelming in the beginning if you don't know where to go, and you won't know where to go. The game, if you buy the physical copy, comes with a map that is all scuffed up and weathered looking, which is cool, but it hides certain parts of the map. But you can use that to navigate about 80% of the screen. In the beginning, your harpy is pretty weak. She has a diving attack, and you have to keep flapping her wings like joust to get her moving around. The bad guys are moving with clear direction, and they can shoot you, and you have to ooch around all that. But once you start getting power-ups and you start getting uh, new powers, you start to become a bad little mama jama yourself. In fact, near the middle to the end of the game, you almost feel overpowered for everything, even the boss dragons. I always cherish a sense of progression like that. This is a joy to play. There's not a lot of games like this. It's also available for the Atari VCS for a song. I would just go and image search for the Harpy map on one of the Atari forums to uh, help you out along the way. Quimp, 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 comp. I don't know how you pronounce it. In fact, it may be impossible to utter what this is with a human tongue. But we've got our third Pong affiliated game on the list so far. Comp 2 is a puzzle action game. 
that is a head scratcher. This, this is something you don't sleepwalk through. You got to be kind of smart and on your toes to get through this. This was released for every major video game system out there from Steam, PlayStation, Xbox, all the way to the Atari VCS. And it's a damn good game. You start off as the ball, stuck in a pong situation. You have like paddle overlords, and you gotta figure out how to escape this pong game that you're trapped in. And once you do, your pong ball is set to escape this world. And there's a lot of obstacles in front of this guy. There's spikes everywhere, there's metal blades flying everywhere, there's enemies, laser guns, boss battles. Yes, boss battles, which is the best thing about the game. The boss battles have a sense of nostalgia oftentimes. In fact, one of the bosses is Warlords influenced, and that's an incredible battle. And really, all the boss battles except for one are remarkable. The sound design is unbelievable. There's a lot of ambient noises there's a lot of ambient sounds that kind of chill you out and put you in this mood and it also makes the game feel very lonely and almost like there's a 2d portal vibe to this thing there's only two buttons you use one changes your directions by 45 degrees and the other one's kind of like a bull rush which you can use to defeat enemies or break through barriers or get through wind bursts this game is incredibly hard there's going to be a lot of trial and error, but it is very, very rewarding if you force your way through it and defeat these damned people that wanted to keep this poor square ball stuck playing Pong for the rest of its life. Good grief. They won't even let you play Pac-Man for 20 minutes out of the day. Screw these guys. Hey, look, it's another Jaguar game. I'm kind of surprised we have so many on this list considering how many bad games are on the Jaguar. With that being said... There's a lot of freaking good games on the Jaguar too, and a lot of people consider Super Burnout as kind of this dark horse favorite to be the best game in the original library. The thing that strikes me right in the beginning when I play this game is this incredible sense of speed Super Burnout has. Allegedly, people claim that this game can render a thousand sprites at a time, and that's just incredible. That's even better than what the Neo Geo could have done in the mid-90s. This is a basic a motorcycle racing game. It won't blow your mind with what it does, but it does have six bikes and a seventh one, if you have the cheat code, that you can utilize that has all sorts of different characteristics, and the game has eight different tracks to boot. The heart and soul of this game is Championship Race, and there's a little cutesy caveat that makes this interesting. Throughout the eight tracks, there's normally one or two bikes that you need to use to kind of get the best time on a particular track. Now this particular bike may not be any good on the next track. The trick with the championship mode is you gotta figure out which bike you're gonna use that's the best for all of them because you can't change your bikes midstream. So getting a perfect score, an A rating at the end of your championship run is next to impossible. And if you're a perfectionist and you like this game, it may uh, drive you to drink and to keep playing this thing for years to come. This may be the fastest non-arcade Atari game that's ever been programmed. Road Blasters and Stun Runner are kind of similar. They're racing games, but they're not traditional racing games like, hey, you got first place, here's a big boob woman kissing you on the cheek, and here's a big fat garland of roses for your big fat neck. These games are more objective based. There may be a story with Stun Runner and Road Blasters, like a post-apocalyptic, futuristic, robot dystopia, but none of that crap matters. What makes these two games great is they're just fun. It's whimsical, it's fun, you can't take it too serious. It's another one of these races in the future where we're flying over race courses for God knows what we're doing. But we're just goofing around having a good time. It's possible to beat the game. You have to complete 50 rally races and let me tell you, it gets kind of tough around level 6, but in typical Atari fare, uh, the further you go, the, the more you can skip ahead with the use of quarters. Thank God these things are on ROMs now, and we don't have to break the bank to play these things. There's plenty of obstacles, but besides time, the main culprit is trying to maintain your fuel levels. Little green orbs of fuel scatter the race course, and you got to pick those up or you're going to run out. I, it's nerve-wracking in a way. Uh, there's a large main tank for gasoline, and then there's almost an equally large reserve tank, and you'll dip into that thing quite a bit before your time with road blasters is done. Occasionally, a UFO will drop some sort of upgrade on top of your car as you're racing, something like a super laser, and uh, you gotta be careful with that, though, as fun as that is. My biggest problem with road blasters 
is that is it feels sometimes like there's just too much irritating minutia going on. You got to watch out for the fuel. You got to make you got to manage the gas. Like why are we in a car where the gas mileage is this terrible to begin with? Your main way of accumulating points is based off not missing. We're flying down the road. We got all these obstacles. We got mines. We got tanks shooting at us and we got to be perfect with our shots. I think it detracts a little bit from the gameplay fun, but at the end of the day, this is kind of how they tempered how long these games lasted in the arcade. Home releases probably were more forgiving and, and probably more fun, but you can't beat the steering wheel, the sound, the graphics of the arcade version of Road Blasters. Wouldn't you know, it's another racing shooter type hybrid game on this particular chunk of the top 100 list. Uh, John and I didn't do this on purpose, but I think we have a theme over these 10 guys. Moon Patrol is another game from Williams Electronics that appears on this list. Uh, Atari must have had a really good relationship with them because they got a lot of the Defender, Robotron, now Moon Patrol. And Moon Patrol is different than Stun Runner, and it's different from Road Blasters to where it's a 2D game, and we're looking at the side. How many racing games have you played from the side? Probably not a lot, because I don't even know if there's another one that exists. Now, the paint job of this is that we're on another planet, and this is also more of a shooter than even Stun Runner or Road Blasters. But Moon Patrol has its own flavor. We're definitely trying to reach a certain point on each stage within a certain time limit. And if we do, we get bonus points for how good the time was. But along the way, wouldn't you know it, them damn aliens are up our butt. By the way, our moon buggy is painted purple. Looks awesome. Looks like Prince or the Penguin painted that guy. And I dig it. At the same time, we shoot up into the air. We shoot out in front of our car. Like we're, I guess the guns are underneath the hood. We're just uh, careening over this moon surface over this foreign planet high rates of speed and we got to watch out obstacles are ahead of us like rocks boulders and the cool thing is some of these enemy ships can drop bombs that create space potholes and i call them space potholes because they're happening in space which i guess that's not cool in the, in the in the Fonzie sense of the word cool, but it is a gameplay wrinkle that I think is a neat idea. This is another pick up and play, easy to understand arcade game that was ported to Atari systems. The 2600 has a very good version of this, but I feel like the 5200 port is the best one Nolan Bushnell's gang ever got a hold of. In 2023, Atari... No, wait a minute. Yeah. In 2023, Atari announced that they were going to release a new version of Lunar Lander, and it wasn't going to be part of their heralded Recharged series. And then we started seeing images of this thing that looked like anime, and I'm like, oh god, I can't stand anime. And the other issue was Lunar Lander. What a weird IP to resurrect. The original Lunar Lander was just that. In fact, I think it was its own genre of games called lander games lunar lander it was like the only one or one of the few there's no fighting there's no enemies it's just you and gravity this was one of the first of those gravity based games that atari horsed around with quite a bit so the resurrection of a new title in 2024 seemed odd combined with this anime story we didn't know what to expect well lo and behold lunar lander beyond is awesome there's still no shooting and your main enemies aren't bad guy hobgoblin space pirates even though there's a couple things like that in this game it's really gravity is your enemy and time is your enemy it reminds me of the situation happening with my bob alones ew so the story is pretty good. The solar system's just getting jacked up. It's kind of like, you know, how we've been getting hurricanes a lot. It's just pretend the hurricanes are solar flares or some sort of crazy stuff going on in the solar system. And it's just happening all over. It's, it's bad. And your job, because you don't really pilot warships, you just pilot these lander type things, is to go do peaceful missions where you're trying to basically rescue human beings or find artifacts or scientists or people that can help on the quest of trying to figure out what went tits up with the solar system. There's a lot of gameplay variation. The missions are unique and it never felt stale. You can get new ships, you get new people on your team. Lunar Land of Beyond is really, it feels like an arcade game, but there's some role-playing elements too. 
you can find modifications spread out throughout the play field of these levels and then you take these modifications and combine them to the ships that you want. You can also level up your crew that you find and you may need multiple crew members who are good at piloting these landers because there's a stress level element in this game where you have to take pills from a crazy doctor to get these people to chill out or they'll start hallucinating and seeing giant eyeballs everywhere. Pretty unique, uh, but weird. If you like anime, that may be a plus. But the story is not that terrible. It's not uh, eye-rollingly awful like a lot of anime is. At the end of the day, you got to tip your hat to the resurrection of the strange IP, along with the fact that this game is fun, and it's incredibly unique, and I don't know if I've ever played anything quite like it. In fact, I know I haven't. And because of that, it tops out this list today at number 71. All right, guys. Well, that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the video. Tell us, did we miss something? Did we get something wrong? Do you hate this list? Are you getting freaked out that your favorite game's not on the list yet? Please put in the comments what you think. And if we miss something, let us know. We want to know. Also, make sure you like and subscribe and hit the notify bell so you know when the next video counting down the top 100 is. You don't want to miss one. All the cool kids are going to be talking about it for years to come. I want to thank John Stoll over at the Atari Network, and I want to put his channel in the description. And also, don't forget, check out my website, Atari7800forever.com, and also go to BigAndFunkyProductions.com. We make movies. Right now, it's Halloween. We're making horror movies. We've made horror movies. Check those out. The Hike, WJHCAM, and Camp Smokey. Plus, we do uh, all sorts of other types of TV. we got a brand new show called Weird Roads, a new episode of Wrestling with Ghosts. Just go check it out. You'll be entertained for years to come. All right, make sure you stay tuned to this channel so you can see what we crown the top 100 Atari games of all time.